Ang madalas sa pag-ikot namin sa site, na-observe namin, isa lang ang waterproofing product na ginagamit para sa buong structure or sa buong bahay or building. So, ang tanong, recommended nga ba ang isang produkto lang para sa buong structure na? And meron nga ba talaga na one waterproofing product na para sa lahat? Yan ang sasagutin namin sa segment na ito. Bago namin sagutin sa inyo kung pwede nga ba ang isang produkto lang para sa lahat, sasagutin ko muna ano yung mga tatlong factors na dapat nyo i-consider bago kayo pumili ng waterproofing product. Simulan natin sa pagtawag ng three factors na to sa acronym na DAT or DAT para hindi kayo malito. Para pag nasa job site kayo, this will help you analyze the situation muna before choosing the right waterproofing product. Alright? So simulan natin sa letter D. So D stands for different conditions. Alright? So kailangan natin intindihin ano ba ang kondisyon ng site natin? So number one, intindi natin mga natural factors. Ano ba ang kailangan niya dyan? Weathering ba? Ulan, init, UV. So kailangan natin i-consider yan. Kailangan din natin consider kung meron bang groundwater. Ayan. And kailangan din natin consider kung para sa ulan ba yan or para yan sa mga water funding. Ayan. So yan yung mga natural factors na kailangan natin intindihin. Number two, kailangan din natin intindihin ang structural factors. Meron bang vibration? May movement ba? Kailangan mo ba ng uh, flexible or pwede na mga rigid type dahil nasa basement ka naman or nasa underground. Ayan. Number three, personal preference. Ito naman yung mga situation na gusto nyo ba gumamit ng tiles lang or gusto nyo gumamit lang ng coatings lang or gusto nyo ba ng roof garden. So, it's your personal preference kung ano yung gusto nyo. Kasi from there, doon tayo mag-analyze na naman kung ano ang tamang waterproofing product na gagamitin natin. Okay, number four, actual situations. Ito naman yung mga bagay na meron na ba existing tiles and then nagkaroon ng tulog. Ayan. Or pwede ka ba mag-waterproof from the positive side? O kailangan sa negative side ka mag-waterproof? Ang negative side nyo ba ay nasa above ground or below ground? So these are some things na you should consider when choosing a waterproofing product. Letter D again is different conditions. Alright? Under naman sa acronym na letter A, ito naman yung ability ng waterproofing product natin. Ayan, no? So ito yung medyo magiging technical tayo ng konti. Pero padadaliin ko sa inyo para, para madali nyo maintindihan. Discuss ko muna sa inyo, ano ba ang iba't ibang klaseng waterproofing material. Some of the waterproofing materials are pwede kang maging membrane type. Ito yung mga membrane type. Ito yung mga either torch applied or cold applied. So, medyo bago pa ang cold applied dito pero sa next topic namin i-discuss naman ang cold applied. Number two, pwede rin siya maging integral waterproofing. So, ito yung kasama na sa buhos natin para magkaroon siya ng waterproofing. Meron din naman number three is yung mga polymer based. So, ito naman mga polymer based. You can use acrylic, you can use polyurethane, or possible pwede ka rin gumamit ng epoxy. So, ito yung mga ibang, ibang klase yung polymer base. And number four, meron naman din mga rigid type waterproofing that uses cement tissues naman. Ayan. So, pwede dyan pumasok ang mga crystalline capillary waterproofing or pwede din dyan pumasok ang mga rigid waterproofing. So, these are just only some of the waterproofing materials. And of course, yung mga innovators natin, tuloy-tuloy pa rin ang pag-develop nila ng mga waterproofing materials. So, these are just some of the common waterproofing materials that is already available in the market. So, balik na tayo ulit no, kung bakit may acronym na letter A, ability of the waterproofing. Alright. Pag-usapan natin, example, yung flexible cement tissues. This is one very common product sa market. So, basically, ang flexible cement tissues ay pinaghalong acrylic at saka polymerized na cement. Basically, when pag pinagsama natin sila, it forms a durable membrane na waterproofing material. So, of course, hindi naman lahat ng flexible cement tissues are built on the same properties. no? So, you have to check kung ano yung tama at magandang waterproofing material according sa mga ASTM standards. Maganda ang flexible cement issues, meron lang siyang mga limitations. So, hindi maganda sa mga foot traffic. Ayan. So, kailangan mo pa mag -tapping. Hindi rin siya maganda na naka-expose dahil hindi rin ganun kaganda ang kanyang UV resistance, lalo na sa roof deck. No? So, nagkaroon ng water funding, possible na madilaminate ang ating membrane. Kaya, nirecommend namin na pag when using this product, kailangan mo mag-apply ng tapping. Okay. So, possible. Ang tanong nyo, eh, Sir Derek, gagamitan ko naman ng over tiles. Eh. Tama. Possible na gagamitin mo yung over tiles at apply mo kagad sa flexible cement issues. But since, nag apply ka ng tiles, you will be using a trowel, may ngipin mo ngayon. Ang concern namin ay baka mamaya, masugat na mo yung membrane. Kaya, ingat kayo. So, that's why we still recommend using a thin topping or screed before applying the tiles. So, yan yung konting limitations ng flexible cement tissues. Another example pa ng isang material is that yung crystalline capillary. So, yung ability naman ng waterproofing na to, 
is that napakaganda na to, to block negative pressures. Ayan. So meaning, hindi mo kaya mag-waterproof sa labas at gusto mo lang mag-waterproof sa loob. Ang napakaganda ng crystalline capillary dahil para siyang si Wolverine, ano, meron siyang mga crystals na nag-crystallize whenever there's water. So every time na may mga movement or nagkaroon ng mga hairline cracks, it will heal itself. Ayan. Ang galing, no? But unfortunately, again, sabi ko nga, may limitations lagi ang mga materials. May maganda at may mga downside. Ayan. Ang downside naman niya, hindi namin siya nire-recommend para sa mga matataas na structures kasi mahina ang kanyang flexibility. That's the reason why naman na pag umuulan na, kung nasa 5th floor ka or probably nasa 6th floor ng building, possible na mag-crack siya. Ayan. So, kaya hindi namin siya nire-recommend sa mga high-rise na buildings. Isang popular na waterproofing material is using styrene acrylic. Sa styrene acrylic pa lang, no? Napakadami po talaga ng styrene acrylic at pure acrylic. Napakarami talaga ng acrylic or polyurethane or even epoxy, napakarami po talaga. We have to consider yung mga test ng ASTM kung papasya siya for waterproofing standard. Ano bang maganda sa tidy na acrylic? Ang maganda dito is that flexible siya. Napakadali niyang gamitin. Also, maganda ang kanyang mga UV resistance. Ang downside lang nga na itong product na to ay hindi ganun kaganda ang kanyang abrasion resistance when it comes to food traffic. Number three, letter T naman. These are time, cost, labor, and convenience. Ito, basically, ito yung una nyo laging titignan. Expense. Ayan. Gastos. Di ba? Will it take time, cost, di ba? And labor, convenience. Ayan, magkakasama sila ngayon eh. No? Kailangan natin i-consider. Possible, ito nga material, pero practical ba? Gagamit ba tayo ng flexible cement tissues sa pag-apply ng waterproofing sa ating firewall? So, number one, ang flexible cement tissues ay napaka-expensive, no? And sabi ko nga sa'yo, number two, hindi siya kasi flexible naman ng isang acrylic base or styrene acrylic base na waterproofing. Mas mahal na siya at hindi pa siya ganun ka-flexible. Alright? Will you be using a flexible cement tissues or will you be using a acrylic base na waterproofing for your firewall? So, when you're going to use flexible cement tissues, number one is mahal siya. And number two, mas mahirap siyang i-apply kasi kailangan mo pang i-mix sila, right? And then, you have to make sure tama yung consistency before mo i-apply. Whereas, yung acrylic base naman, pag open mo, you can just uh, use roller and apply. That's why we have to consider no three things. no D, for different conditions. A, ability ng waterproofing na material. And number three, time, cost, labor, and convenience. So ayan no, medyo malinaw na sa inyo yung DAT principle no. So, hopefully, naintindihan niyo na ako kung bakit hindi pwedeng isang waterproofing product lang para sa lahat. So that's why here at BuildRight, tinusulat po namin yung bawat product for which area talaga ang application kasi we already know what waterproofing material you're going to need and na consider namin in time cost and convenience and labor po nito. So to make it very efficient for you. Ano ba talaga ang kailangan namin gamitin for toilet and bath, sa mga basement? In this video, we're going to summarize everything no. So I'm going to make it very short. Hindi sa video, only an overview will be discussed. So, pag-usapan muna natin ang toilet and bath. So, kailangan natin i-consider, again, letter D, no? Sabi niya, is uh, different conditions. So, saan ba galing ang tubig? So, mostly mga tubig ay galing sa tap water. So, galing sa mga probably sa bathtub, no? Or galing probably sa shower. Ano pa? Yung floors are uh, mostly tiles. And, of course, madalas din may movement kung nasa second and third floor ka. Kaya, tatin kailangan siya i-waterproof, no? So, these are the letter D. And letter A, ano naman yung ability ng waterproofing na pwede natin siyang i-consider? So, nabanggit ko naman sa inyo na merong product na bagay para sa mga ganito. So, ang re-recommend namin, pwede you can use either flexible cement tissues which is flexicrete or you can use Blackout 40 for this type of application. Para sa mga hindi nakakaalam pa ako ano yung Blackout 40, yung Blackout 40 is a cold applied membrane material. It's basically a cloth. It's a non-moving cloth. no? And then you just use style adhesive as your adhesive and then you apply it sa toilet and bath area. So, para lang siya tela. No? Parang binalutan mo lang siya. So, ang advantage ng using Blackout 40 kasi is that hindi mo na kailangan mag-tapping. Pwede ka na straight to tiles. No? So, travel mo kahit may ngipin yan, hindi niya masusugatan kasi napakatibay po ng material na yun. And, ang maganda rin dito sa Blackout 40 is that yung mga corner joints nyo, you will be using Blackout 40 cloth for your corner joints. Kahit nasa mataat na floor ka, ang maganda lang dito is mas maganda yung movement capabilities niya. So, ang maganda rin sa Blackout 40 is that yung corner in and corner out mo, ay meron na siyang available na corner in and corner out uh, na cloth. Ayan. So, you just need to use eh, tal-adhesive lang and then dikit mo na siya corner in, corner out. Diba? Isa yun sa pinakamahirap eh i-plug yung mga gaps doon or i-plug yung mga cold joints doon. For more detailed explanation ng uh, flexitit, you can watch episode number 3 uh, sa YouTube channel po natin under sa Magtanong Para Sigurado playlist. And letter T naman, ano, time and cost. So definitely, mura po yung uh, flexible cement tissues and blackout 40 for this kind of application. Letter T, sa time and cost naman, ano, ito yung sasabihin ko honestly. Possible sasabihin nyo sa akin, eh Derek, mas mura si Sapal RTU eh. 
ba't hindi na lang si Sapala or Tio? Bet, babalik kasi ako sa letter A na naman eh, yung ability ng waterproofing material. That's why hindi namin na-recommend yung acrylic base dahil na-test na po namin. Yes, probably mas mahal to sa Sapala or Tio, but definitely this is much cheaper than mga torch applied membrane. But you have to consider those aspects. Ang advantage mo naman kay Blackout 40, hindi mo na kasi kailangan mag-tapping. Pag gamit mo na Blackout 40, apply ka na kagad ng tiles. Sir Derek, eh paano naman pare ang toilet and bath ko? Under sa letter D, sa different conditions, no? Eh may tiles na existing tiles. Eh gusto ko lang, eh masod, ay eh may tulo. Ano bang waterproofing product ara dito? So again, no? balik tayo sa ability and time, no? So ang re-recommend namin dito for the easiest repair method is using Blackout TW dahil mas matipid siya, mura, and effective. So ang hindi lang pwede gamitin sa Blackout TW ay pang outdoor kasi meron siyang yellowing effect. Doon papasok yung personal preference nyo kung okay na ba sa inyo yun, na may tendency si na mag-yellowing or pwede nyo consider o oh, sige pag nag-yellow na tsaka ko na lang itap coat ng ibang floor coating pwede rin naman yon for this you can use floor tech flex so this is a rubberized na polyurethane floor coating number 2 pag-usapan naman natin yung pinaka-common na tanong sa amin roof deck daming problema dito sa roof deck consider natin again letter D ano ba ang different conditions na meron na saan ba nanggagaling ang tubig obviously galing siya sa ulan and then ano pa ba nga kailangan natin i-consider sa different conditions gagamitin ba to sa lalakarin ba ng tao to most of the time, no, ginagamit natin yung roof deck natin parang sampayan ng ating mga labahan or gusto nyo ito yung gathering place natin. Most of the time, gusto nyo sana magamit ito. Whatever, kung ano man yung gagamitin, depende naman din sa inyo kung gusto nyo ba mag-tiles yan or hindi mag-tiles. After that, we have to consider the ability na naman ng anong waterproofing material gagamitin. Kung hindi kayo magtatiles, ang recommendation namin ay gumamit ng Clever Seal from Buildright. So, this is a polyurethane product. Pwede mo nang gamitin for light traffic application. So, but don't forget, ha, you need to use a moisture body Barrier Primer, which is Epicoat MB. So, pasabihin natin, Derek, gusto rin namin ito kasi gamitin ng mga gathering and parties, no? And meron ka pang mga gamit na ilalagay doon. Para to protect your waterproofing membrane, we would recommend using Floor Tech Shield naman. Para may protection lang tayo top layer, para hindi masugatan yung waterproofing membrane natin. Paano naman? Eh, Sir Derek, gusto naman namin gumamit ng tiles. You can use two waterproofing product, no? For this. Either you can use uh, Flexicrete, and then before tayo mag-topping, and then tiles. So, sabi ko naman sa inyo kanina, kailangan nyo mag tapping dahil ang pinaka-concern namin ay using the trowel before applying tile adhesive is that mamaya masugatan yung flexicrete. So, isa pa natin pwedeng gamitin is yung Blackout 40. So, basically, this is a geotextile na waterproofing sheet. So, you can just use tile adhesive to apply it. Ang maganda rito, hindi mo na kailangan gumamit ng tapping. You can use your trowel to apply the tile adhesive and then place na kagad. Yan ay makakasave sa inyo ng time and cost. And don't forget pala sa mga corner joints natin. Either you can use leak plug or you can use Blackout 40 strips. For exterior wall naman, ano naman ang mga things to consider natin, no? So, again, kailangan natin i-consider yung uh, different conditions, diba? So, nangyayari, galing to sa ulan, obviously. And, syempre, kailangan mo na magandang weathering. Ayan, syempre, ayaw mo nang ingilaw, ayaw mo na nagka-crack dahil caused by UV. And, gusto mo, syempre, hindi po mapasok ang tubig, right? So, dito, nire-recommend naman namin is si Sapal RTU na PU Acrylic or si Sapal 2-in-1 na PU Acrylic. Ayan. New and improved na po yung Sapal 2-in-1 natin and Sapal RTU. So, here at BuildRight, every time na may mga bagong technology, we we'll try to add it as long as still cost-efficient para sa atin. Definitely, for time and cost, this is the cheapest product available for waterproofing your exterior walls. Para sa mga hairline cracks, no, before applying yung waterproofing, either Sapal 2-in-1 or Sapal RTU in your exterior wall, repair muna natin yung mga hairline cracks natin before applying the waterproofing product. Number four, ang problema naman natin sa ating interior walls. Ayan. Ano yung mga condition na possible? So, ang condition possible dito ay may obstruction sa labas or yung kapitbahay na ayaw magpa-waterproofing sa atin sa labas or dahil may obstruction lang. Ano yung pwedeng waterproofing under sa A? Ability of waterproofing, no? So, yan. Medyo tricky na to. So, ang recommendation namin dito ay si Flexor. Ito yung waterproofing product para sa mga ganitong application. Dahil ang maganda sa product na to ay it can withstand negative side pressure. And at the same time, it's flexible, no? Ang galing, no? Kasi normally, di ba, pag negative side pressure, dapat medyo rigid. So, ito, medyo flexible na at the same time. And maganda rin sa kanya dito, after mo mag-tick plaster, pwede mo na siya applyin and you don't need skin coat anymore or even yung primer na flat latex, you can apply like you talked about already. Okay, it's a cheap alternative. For more details on interior wall, you can watch Build Right channel in YouTube under Magtanong Playlist.
is episode number 9. For basements naman, ano, saan ba nangagaling yung mga tubig? Ano ba yung different conditions na meron? So obviously, yung tubig na to should be coming from groundwater. Ayan. And yung tubig na to should have a very strong hydrostatic pressure. So here at Build Right, we recommend the Crystore, this is a crystalline capillary product, to withstand this kind of pressure. We do not recommend using other materials for this, no? Uh, unless you have to ask the manufacturer kung ano yung pwede nila para sa mga basement side na to. Dahil this part is a very tricky side in waterproofing. For swimming pool and cistern tank, this is similar to the basement waterproofing, no? So you can use, since the water will be coming from the groundwater, so again, we're going to waterproof the negative side. So we would recommend Crystore for this to withstand negative pressure. In this case, since may tubig ka sa cistern tank at saka swimming pool, it also acts as a positive side waterproofing. Basically, it acts as an impregnable material to block off water coming from the ground, coming in to your swimming pool or cistern tank, and prevents water inside your cistern tank or swimming pool from coming out. For more details about Crystor, you can watch our video in our Build Right YouTube channel under Magtanong Playlist, episode number 29. Ay, may good news pala ako sa inyo. For swimming pools, pwede rin pala gamitin si Blackout 40. Ayan. So, dali lang. Gamitin mo na tile adhesive and then apply Blackout 40 and then you can apply your tiles already. Uh, sa mga merong existing tiles na kailangan pang i-waterproof, you can also use Blackout 40 and then reapply new tiles. After waterproofing your cistern tank, we recommend that you use Blackout ETL to prevent algae growth. If you use tiles, pwede rin naman ang talo lang natin sa tiles mas mahirap linisin kasi yung algae, meron pa siya mga grout na kailangan mo pang linisin. Yun lang naman yung downside. For above ground swimming pool, no, you can use either Blackout 40 or you can use uh, FlexiCrete for this. Again, uh, don't forget your cold joints no, or corner joints. You can use either leak plug or Blackout 40 strips to plug these joints. Para naman sa mga concrete finish na gusto nyo medyo natural yung look nyo, cement finish, cement look, you can use silox for this. And para naman sa mga may stones, bricks, na gusto nyo natural yung effect, ayaw nyo ng makintab, you can also use silox for this. For in more information about silox, you can watch our Build Right YouTube channel under Build Right News episode number 1. One tip para sa inyo pala, no? para sa mga buhos natin, I recommend that you use Blackout IWL. This is an integral waterproofing product no? na kasama na sa buhos ninyo. Gusto nyo sa job site mix na ibubuhos, pwede rin naman. This product will act as your second waterproofing protection in case your primary waterproofing product fails. Bakit ko sinasabi na secondary lang siya? Kasi hindi siya yung pwede maging primary mo eh. Hindi siya yung pwede si integral waterproofing lang ang maging sole protector mo. Kasi ang ginagawa lang po ng integral waterproofing is that pinapalit niya lang yung pores. Diba? Nag-evaporate yung water sa structure. So pinapalit niya yung mga pores na yan para hindi makapasok ang tubig. So kung tatanungin mo sa akin ay Sir Derek, 100% ba yan na hindi na makapasok tubig? Ang sasagutin ko kagad sa inyo ay hindi po natin sigurado. It definitely lessens the moisture that will be coming in but it is not 100% protection. Ayan ano, so na-explain ko na sa inyo no, na for every specific wet areas, you need a specific waterproofing product. So you need expert solution for every wet area. Flash on your screen right now are the different episodes that you can watch under our Build Right YouTube channel for more details of this application. So at least alam nyo na rin ano, na hindi namin na-recommend na isang waterproofing material para sa lahat. So we recommend an expert solution for every wet area. So hopefully itong video na to ay nakatulong sa inyo kung paano ang pagpili ng tamang waterproofing material sa inyong structure. Again, this is Derek Tan. Magtanong para sigurado.